All right, all right, guys, welcome back. You are listening to The Micah Dobbins Show from Misfits of Media. And today we're going to get into our next segment. This segment is called Entrepreneur's Wisdom. Um, for those who don't know, Entrepreneur's Wisdom is the segment where I'm able to kind of share um, some of my experiences as an entrepreneur, as well as share different books or stories of entrepreneurs that will help you as you endeavor to start your own business, or maybe you have a, a business already, but you just wanted some tips or some things to chew on, to meditate on, to grow on, you can find this segment um, on my podcast as well as on YouTube. It's called Entrepreneur's Wisdom. And you're able to, you know, just enjoy this segment to help you become better businessmen and women and better entrepreneurs. So uh, I've read from the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership a couple of weeks ago, and I'm still continuing that. But today we're going to read from the actual book of entrepreneurs wisdom classic writings by legendary entrepreneurs and it has been edited by peter cross editor of the book of business wisdom so i've shared i believe a story from this book um, a couple of shows ago and i wanted to go back over a different story this time we'll be talking about the story of the power of Com in commitment by wally amos the power in commitment and this is, of course, from none other than Wally Amos. And I'm going to give you the backstory of Wallace after we share what he had to say of Wally. I said Wallace <laughs> of Wally Amos after I share what he had to say to commit or to procrastinate. That is the question, whether to make a decision to create a rich, abundant life filled with the desires of your heart or to live a life full of defeat and lack. Why is it that some people are successful? And others never attain their goals. Why do you suppose? What do you suppose is a secret ingredient that pushes some over the top while others never even begin to climb? The largest obstacle between you and your goal is a lack of total commitment. Often we use phrases like I'll try. I guess I can. I hope I can. But commitment is expressed in two words. I will. My personal struggles and experiences over the years have proven without a doubt that commitment gets the job done. Commitment is what separates the achievers from the sustainers. It was my unwavering commitment to open a store selling chocolate chip cookies that enabled me to give birth to the famous Amos family of cookies. Before going any further, let me share with you a writing by the great German writer Goth. It is titled The Power of Commitment. Until one is committed... There is a hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always an effectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans. The moment that one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events, issues from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidences and meetings and materials, assistance, which no man could have dreamed would have come his way. Are you in earnest? Seek this very minute. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius power in it. Only engage and the mind grows heated. Begin and then the task will be completed. So he was just sharing a couple of things <clears throat> from one of his writers to kind of help you to have understanding that you have to take action. You have to be committed. Wally Amos was able to create famous Amos cookies and he had to be committed to the vision. He had to decide that, yes, I'm going to do this. No more. I might. Maybe I can. I think he said I will do this. And he went ahead and took that step forward. It says, if you have never taken inventory of your life, now might be a good time to do so. How many times have you tried something without successfully completing it? What was your attitude at the time? Did you doubt your ability to perform? Did you doubt the credibility of your idea? Did you check with friends and relatives for their approval? What was your level of commitment? These are all symptoms of a person who has not made a total commitment to a goal. Perhaps you even said yes, and then later decided it was a foolish idea or too risky. The point is, you never gave birth to your idea, and I bet your dollars to cookies, a lack of total commitment, played a big part in causing you to fall short of your goal. 
I saw a series of illustrations entitled, It Was Just an Idea, which further illustrate how crippling procrastination or lack of commitment can be. Immediately below the title were nine squares, each with a picture of a light bulb and a quote above each bulb. The first square contained a brightly glowing bulb with the quote, I have an idea. The bulb in the square two had lost some of its glow and it said a word of caution. Square three had a dimmer bulb with the words a little too radical. <laughs> in the fourth square, the bulb continued to fade with the quote, I like it myself, but. But is one of those obstacles. When you put that but in, it starts to kill more ideas, takes you down. The fifth square shows the bulb darker and yet it reads, we tried something just like that once. Just because you tried it before, some people feel like, well, you know, I've tried something similar and it didn't work. You might be that one step away from that idea taking off. It said the sixth square sees almost all the light gone from the bulb. And the quote says, let me play devil's advocate. You got to be aware of friends and people that will try to act as if they're helping you. But then they're also kind of throwing shade at you at the same time. You know, after a while, you know, the devil's advocate, you, you need people who are really going to help you. You don't want people playing the advocate against you. In the seventh square, the bulb was ever so faint with a quote that said, it's just not us. <laughs> How do you know if you haven't even tried? You know, there was a cartoon I remember my kids was watching. I think it was like robots one day. And the guy was like saying, we need to go do this. We need to do this. And don't you guys have any goals set for you? And one of the uh, 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 cartoons said, never try, never fail. You know, that was his philosophy of life. Just don't try. You ain't got to worry about failure. It's a horrible philosophy. And it shows as this bulb is getting darker and darker that it was a problem. Then the eighth one, it said the eighth square shows a slight trace of the bulb. And it says, I wish it were that easy. I'm going to tell you something. Nothing is going to come to you easy. You're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to dig deep. You're going to have to really take the time to make it happen because thinking that things are just going to fall into place and, you know, and oh, it's just going to be so easy. You know, that that's for fairy tales. That's what people look to at the get rich quick schemes. You know, they think that, man, if I just take this money and put it in this stock, it's just going to magically grow and I'm going to be a millionaire overnight and I'll be like Warren Buffett. Or if I could just, just no, sir, it doesn't work like that. You have to build, you have to work, you have to labor. For what you want. It says in the ninth and the last square, the bulb completely disappeared. And the final quote says, oh, it was just an idea. It was just an idea. Everything that is or ever was will be started as an idea in someone's mind. The right to ideas is a right that cannot be taken away from you. Always believe in yourself and in your ideas. And this was by Wally Amos in 1988. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a backstory so that you can understand who Wally Amos is. This baker of premium cookies opened his first store in 1975, received the president's award for entrepreneurial excellence, lost it all, then resurrected himself, now baking and distributing muffins under the Uncle No Name brand name. It's been some cookie trip for Wally Famous Amos, who was born in Tallahassee, Florida, but at age 12 moved to New York to live with his Aunt Della, who later turned him on to homemade chocolate chip cookies and was his inspiration. In New York, he survived the mugging and the gangs, and he worked odd jobs. To escape the streets, he joined the Air Force in 1953 in hopes of seeing the world. His first stop, Biloxi, Mississippi although he did make it to Hawaii and Guam. Amos's first big break came in 1961 when a friend helped him to get a job at the William Morris Talent Agency mailroom. Not long after, he became a secretary, and when the agency created its music department to handle rock and roll acts, Amos positioned himself to become a full-fledged agent. The first big act that he brought in was Simon and Garfunkel. Unfortunately, the duo signed with another agency. Amos made numerous friends and contacts that came into play when he launched his cookie company. By 1974, he had wearied of the show business treadmill, so he decided it was time to start his venture. The next year, he raised $25,000 and opened his first store in Hollywood. Anyone who believed that what happened to me came easier overnight is terribly incorrect. 
My day-to-day, night-in, night-out concerns were about Famous Amos continuing until the next batch of money came from somewhere, anywhere, from anyone. (laughs) This is a story of an entrepreneur. A lot of times, you know, you'll get an idea, you'll start a service, or you'll have a product-led business, and people may begin to take note and start to come but you run out of capital. You don't have the money. So you're constantly like living with it in the back of your mind. What am I going to do if I fall short? What am I going to do if I struggle? And I remember my first year um, when I left my full-time job um, a few years ago and I went full-time in my own entrepreneurial endeavor. I started my own business. I I started a logistics company and I was um, working in transportation and shipping medical and all these different things. And I remember one day I was coming out of Arden, Uh, I believe it was Arden, North Carolina. I was coming back from North Carolina, driving down to Georgia, and I started to have issues with my vehicle. Now, mind you, I had to pay uh, a high premium for insurance, and I ended up having to get assistance from the church for that. Well, now I'm driving back, and I start to have trouble, and it was my transmission. It actually was going out on me. And if it wasn't for my brother James, I had to do a personal loan with my brother James to actually get the transmission fixed. I would have been... My legs would have been cut from under me within my first year of business. <laughs> Thank God that I've survived to continue. So I understand that mindset that he was able to sell cookies and he was wondering where the money was coming. But, you know, before he starts another batch for another order to secure that stability in 1985, Amos sold a majority stake to the Bass family, who then sold their share to another investor group, who then sold it to a Taiwanese food conglomerate. Meanwhile, Amos lost control and the use of his name as a brand. Part of the problem, according to Amos, I didn't always listen to others. I thought I was invincible. My ego got a little too big for me. One thing he never lacked was enthusiasm. In the power and commitment, he gives a highly charged rallying cry for what it takes to see an idea through. So we realized that, according to the Entrepreneur's Book of Wisdom, that Wally Amos lost And was able to rebuild. He was willing to commit though. To the idea. And created a national brand. Um, And and I really take note of these stories. And I share my own personal experiences. Because you know as an entrepreneur. You're riddled with many things. Sometimes it may be self doubt. You might feel like am I doing the right thing. Sometimes if you've left the job. Obviously in the back of your mind. There's a sinking in the pit of your stomach. Like did I make the right call. Should I have gone back? Um, I'm just so thankful. I'm just so thankful to God that I never looked back, that I continue to move forward. And he's been able to give me more and more success in these things. But as an entrepreneur, that's always something that you battle within your mind. Am I making the right decision? And and the thing is, is you don't want to be stagnant. You don't want to procrastinate and do nothing. Take action, you know. Take a deep breath. Make sure you pray, meditate, talk to the Lord, talk to some friends and family to get the right direction sometimes. But take a step. Don't just stagnate. And um, I'm thankful for this rule of commitment that was shared so that we can make sure we're committed to see this thing through. This was the Entrepreneur's Wisdom segment of the Micah Dobbins Show. I hope you guys enjoyed that segment. We're going to catch a quick break and we're going to be right back for the next segment. All right.